Hi, everyone. This is Heather Lawtonen from the Flourish Academy, where our goal is to empower, educate, and elevate you to create a life that you love through the art and business of photography. In this video, we are going to compare ISO performance between the Nikon D750 and the D850. But first, make sure you check out our sponsor, ymcamera.com, for all of your photography needs. And this is especially important in relation to this video because I was able to get my hands on a D850 thanks to them. And as much as I love making videos for you guys, there's no way I was going to spend $3,200 just to test this camera. Now this video is not meant to be an exhaustive review of the D850. If you'd like more information on the comparisons and reviews of the 750 versus the 850, you can jump over to the Google and they would be happy to help you. I will say that as a photographer who often shoots in low light, ISO performance is one of the things that is really important to me when evaluating cameras. So I took both of these cameras outside recently and ran several tests. And the way I'm going to approach this is by selecting metadata from the library filter and choosing each of the ISO speeds so we can compare them. I'm going to select both of them and press C on the keyboard in order to jump to compare mode. Now I'm zoomed in at one to one here. I can back up and take a look at the entire photo, but this is one of those rare instances where I will allow myself to become a pixel peep I am looking at individual pixels and at ISO 1000, I'm not seeing much of a difference. Let's jump up to 1250 and do the same thing, zooming in. And to be honest, at this ISO, I prefer the pattern on the D750, which is pretty interesting. Let's look at 1600. That's a very common ISO setting for me at wedding receptions. And again, we're zoomed in at one to one. When I was conducting this experiment, I purposefully shot at a very shallow depth of field so that I could see the grain patterns in the shadows and the highlights. And that's because I like to evaluate them both ways. I don't see a lot of difference here at 1600. Let's jump to 2000. Oh, this is interesting. What I did at 2000 was I took two photos that were exposed properly and then I significantly underexposed so I could see what happens when you have to pull up in the develop module. We'll take a look at that in a moment. ISO 2000. Again, I don't see much of a difference here except I think I prefer the D750. Let's take both of these really underexposed images into the develop module for a moment and significantly pull up on the exposure so we can see the pattern of this grain. And I'll do the same with the D850 file. Let's make sure these are the same 4.3. Take them into the compare and zoom in and look at these patterns. Okay. What I can see on my screen, and I'm not sure how this is translating on video, but the pattern on the D850 is a little cleaner and it doesn't appear to have as much color noise as the D750. You can really see that in the shadow areas. That is to say, it appears to me that the pattern on the D850 is more uniform, which is beneficial when editing the photograph. Let's jump to ISO 2500 into the compare module, zooming in. These look very similar, so I don't have an issue there. 3200, I'm not sure if it's just me, but 3200 really looks like the 750 performed a little bit better, a little bit. How much does it even matter? At this point, I have not seen a significant difference between these two cameras. ISO 4000 looks very similar. Again, the D750 looked good to me. Let's take this to ISO 5000. I'm trying to move a little more quickly through these. D750 looks better at 5000. 6400, I did the experiment again with the underexposures, so we'll take a look at those in a moment. I just feel that with the last few photos, the D750 looks like it's performing better to me. I'd love to hear your opinion below if you could leave it in the comments. It would be interesting to me if you see it differently than I do. Let's take this up pretty significantly and then we will take those into the compare mode and see what we have. So this is significantly underexposed and then corrected at ISO 6400. I do see a little more color noise 
in the D750, but let's zoom in to verify that. And when I say a little bit, now that I've zoomed in, I think, wow, I really don't notice it much at all. The patterns also look very similar to me. That's really interesting. Let's move on to ISO 8000. We'll zoom in. I don't see much of a difference at ISO 8000. Let's see what I did here at 10,000. I took several photos and I underexposed as well. Let's take a look at the photos that were exposed properly. To me, the D750 looks better here. The, the grain is less. The pattern is good. I'm not seeing much of a difference, just slightly better. We'll jump this into the develop module. This is the D750 underexposed. So let's increase that and also grab the one from the D850. Compare those two. ISO 10,000, which is incredible. That's something I typically do not shoot at weddings, but I suppose if I had to, I know that I could. But this image was severely underexposed. Let's zoom in. The pattern looks very similar to me. I'm not noticing a huge difference in terms of color versus luminance noise. They both performed really well, which is pretty impressive at an ISO that high. Let's take a look at 12,800. I like to just pan around in these images and see if I notice anything different. And I do not, so we will move on. ISO 16,000. And while we're doing this, I would love if you could leave a comment and let me know what is what camera do you use, first of all, and what is the highest ISO that you are comfortable shooting? Um, it, it might be different for clients versus your personal work, but I would just be interested. I think everyone has a personal preference when it comes to this. Is it just me or does it look like the D850 has more noise in this image than the 750? Curious for sure. ISO 20,000, we'll zoom in. This is actually starting to get a little bit boring. <laughs> I just don't see much of a difference. So why don't we take a big leap and just go really high and look at ISO 51,200, which is the highest that the D750 goes. The 850 goes higher than that, but in terms of comparison, we'll look at this. And looking at these images, I don't mind this, this grittiness, this texture to them, I think, it can actually work in some applications, but as we zoom in and look at the patterns, the patterns are very similar. And if you really study this, again, I am being an incredible pixel peeper here. <gasps> Why don't we take it one step further? Wow, three to one <laughs> to look at these patterns. The 850 is on the left and the 750 is on the right. That's really very interesting, isn't it? I'll let you draw your own conclusion on that one. I shot all of these photos in the raw format, so the camera was not doing any of the processing. However, Lightroom does render these, but they're rendering them in theory the same way. In conclusion, if you were to ask me if it is worth upgrading from the 750 to the 850 based on ISO performance alone, then no, it's not worth it. But there are many other factors con to consider. The 850 is a solid piece of gear. Nikon knows how to manufacture a camera. ISO performance is not the only consideration. You just have to determine what's important for you and take it from there. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.